Welcome back to part 3 of the three-part presentation on bacterial genomes. This presentation will discuss some of the additional tools which are available online for analysis of bacterial genomes. One of the useful tools which is available online and which operates very well is the CRISPR finder. So the CRISPR finder will look for repeat regions which it then identifies as CRISPR sequences based on comparison to existing databases. Now CRISPR is an independent tool which means that the search does not depend on scanning the flanking regions of a cache sequence. It looks for independent repeat regions which are palindromic. CRISPR sequences can be applied for phenotyping of bacteria and one of the examples is the spoligotyping of mycobacterium tuberculosis strains. It can also be extended for the genotyping of other bacterial species. So this is the basic layout of a CRISPR finder online program. All you need to do is upload your sequence here. This can be a single contig or it can be multiple contigs, but it's recommended that you upload single contigs. And after you upload the contig in the FASTA format, you can click on find CRISPR and the CRISPR finder will identify regions known as CRISPRs. Another useful tool is FAST. FAST can be applied to identify phage insertion sequences. Bacteriophages insert themselves into genomes and may be maintained over the life cycle of the bacterial cell. When the bacterial host multiplies, the FAST the FAST genomes are retained within the bacterial genome and FAST is a useful tool which can be applied to identify these insertion sequences. To use the FAST tool, all you need to do is upload your sequence in a gene bank formatted file into this browser and execute the program. FAST will identify FAGE insertion sequences based on specific genes which are derived from FAGE genomes. BLAST Koala is a useful tool for the identification of genes associated with specific pathways. This tool operates by accepting your FASTA sequence following which it will assign the genes to specific pathways. So BLAST Koala can be applied to identify specific pathways which can be involved in some processes such as elimination of metal ions from the bacterial cell as well as specific metabolic pathways. This is the output from uh, CAG BLAST Koala. So each gene will be assigned to a specific pathway. A dot plot is a graphical representation of the similarities or differences between two genomes. So these differences are represented as discontinuities within a plot. And dot plots are useful for graphical representation and to identify regions of the genome which are discontiguous. Since this is a dot plot it, which is developed using Bacillus series, as a reference we have Bacillus series ATCC strain. So as you can see, there are certain discontinuities in this plot, which are indications of differences in the genome. By zooming in on these differences, one can identify specific regions of the genome which have evolved or mutated with reference to the ATCC reference strain. In addition to the dot plot, we can also use BRIG, VISTA, and MOV to identify variations in the genome. Let's look at some of them. So MOV can conduct multiple genome alignments. This will run from your Windows operating system or your Mac operating system. The URL for this software is available at this link. So once you download MOV in your system, you can enable it to align two genomes and identify differences between these two genomes.
classical MOV output looks like this. So MOV is very useful when you want to identify rearrangements of the genome, but it should be taken into consideration with regard to the assembly. For instance, when you have an incorrect assembly, you may get what appears to be an output indicating an alignment. However, if you look at it more deeply, it may not be a rearrangement. It may be an artifact of, of misassembly. So when you use MOV, if you do identify regions which are purported to be uh, rearrangements, you need to carry out a PCR of this region and resequence to validate them in a in vitro lab. Finally, we have Vista. So Vista is another browser which can be used for comparative genomics as well as to identify ORFs. Vista plot gives a graphical representation of the genome as indicated in this figure. So you can see the beginning and the end of each gene. So these are all useful tools for visualization of your genome data. Blast Ring Image Generator, which is available at this link, provides a software which enables of genomes. You can compare one uh, or more genomes with your reference strain, and you will obtain a ring like this. Although it's hard to view at this resolution, Brig is a useful tool to obtain a snapshot of the genome. So as you can see, discontiguous regions are represented in this white missing gaps. And once you obtain this, you, this figure, you can zoom in on this particular discontinuous region, and you can look more deeply into the genes which are missing, which have been acquired by each of the genomes. Finally, we have the rapid annotation using subsystem technology, which will al align genomes to reference strains and obtain differences or similarities based on similarity searches. So in a uh, BLAST or RAST output looks like this. So RAST will basically conduct a BLAST using its own platform, and it will map back the genes to reference strains, and it will also assign genes into their subsystems based on their functions. For instance, you ha may have genes related to virulence, disease, and defense. So this will cluster, in this example, 90 genes from this particular genome have been assigned to disease and defense. RAST also offers you insights into metabolic pathways of your specific genome. Another very useful browser for online analysis is the University of California Santa Cruz UCSC Genome Browser. It is available at this link. This genome platform offers a multiplicity of tools for analyzing your bacterial genomes. So with that, I would like to end this three-part series on genome analysis. I hope you have obtained some insights into the basics of genome analysis. We will discuss further in the classroom sessions with regard to the application of these specific tools. This tutorial has been designed for students as well as for lecturers who are interested in developing their own bioinformatics lectures. I have covered some of the basics of bioinformatics, and I hope these short tutorials will be useful to you to develop your own genome assembly and annotation pipeline. Thank you for watching. Please leave your comments in the section below. Thank you.